Father Bill wanted me to script, s s s uh, <laughs> skip the sermon today. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> We all make mistakes. Who hasn't kicked themselves after seriously inserting foot and mouth? Being insensitive, maybe judgmental towards someone, despite being the hip, cool, inclusive, and loving Christians that we are. We have all been in that place where we should have, could have, but did not avoid maybe insulting someone with our words or our actions. And today's gospel confirms that we are all in good company. Did Jesus' response to the Canaanite woman in today's narrative give you pause? It should have. The woman was asking for his mercy, for his compassion, for his help on behalf of her daughter who was very ill. And what did Jesus do? WWJD. Well, I invite you to reread today's gospel lesson at some point today or this week and see for yourself. In his human and divine being, Jesus acted as humanly as the rest of us. Let me shed a little light on the biblical backdrop regarding the tension between Canaanites and Jews. According to the book of Genesis, chapter 9, Noah cursed the descendants of his youngest son, Ham. The son of Ham, whose name was Canaan, became the, the patriarch of said cursed lineage that was marginalized by Jews even past the time of Jesus. So all of that marginalizing happened way before Jesus' time. Prejudice can sustain itself for many, many centuries. And it did then. Because of the curse made by Noah upon the descendants of Canaan, written in that book of Genesis, there were Jewish laws created and also written in the Old Testament permitting slavery of non-Jews. And so Canaanites were one of those ethnic groups that became part of that lower case of slaves. That was the curse. Theologians try reaching and stretching the written fact about the story that we just heard. They just want to soften Jesus' words by saying, well, Jesus only muttered his thoughts to himself. <laughs> True. Or, he was just talking to the disciples. It wasn't intended for everyone to hear. Be careful. The internet is here, is listening. <laughs> The fact of the matter is that whether he muttered the words or shared them with his disciples, some were, someone heard him call the woman a dog. It is written. You may recall that in our confession of sin, we ask God's forgiveness for that which we think, say, or do. Jesus failed on all counts. I've wondered... What tone of voice the woman and Jesus had with each other? Was he angry, tired, hungry, stressed, overwhelmed? Was the woman too sassy, not humble enough? Too humble, I don't think so. In her quick-witted replies, you know, Think about it. So much had happened to Jesus in the weeks preceding or days preceding. He fed, wait, first of all, his cousin John was murdered. We've heard that one about three weeks ago. He fed, healed, and loved over 5,000 families. He walked on water. I'd be exhausted, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, was his human side 
showing its limitations, maybe? What was going on? I don't know. We'll never know. But we heard the story. One of the things I like about this passage is that it demonstrated Jesus' human and divine nature. In the end, he realized his error because he recognized his own error. He was able to witness the incredible faith of the Canaanite woman. Then he confessed his sin to her by acknowledging her faith and healing her daughter. He was forgiven. She was forgiven. There are many questions that come up for me with this reading, and so many directions to take with this passage. We can also see how it plays out in our own lives. One of the profoundly theological thoughts that the story stirred has to do with the doctrine of predestination. Predestination is not a black or white concept for me because it always seems to be that in every juncture of life, God's will and human will are intertwined. I guess it makes it gray or, in my words, a little messy. But you know, in that intertwining, we're all present. God, individuals, communities. God's will and human will always seem to be in the gray. There seems to be some wiggle room in predestination as I see it, because on the one hand, God is the creator of all things, and on the other hand, God gave humanity free will. We are never left alone to our own devices, because God's grace is present through the Holy Spirit as our advocate, and our protector. So could it be possible that this interaction was predestined to happen so that we here today in 2014 could catch a glimpse of our Lord's human nature and to see how he went about redeeming himself? Was he predestined to happen so that we could learn about universal love? including everyone? Canaanites were slaves. They were outcasts that had been cursed by Noah. There are folks in the world today who are still slaves. People being killed for believing differently than the majority or from speaking up like she did. Look what's happening in Israel today with Palestinians or what ISIS militants are doing to Christians in Mosul, Iraq. Might Jesus just have acted this way out of his free will, the human side of Jesus, in order to ensure that the disciples followed his will of inclusion and universal love? Was his intention a lesson to Peter and Paul so that when they went off proclaiming the Christian message of love, compassion, and salvation for all, they would actually go to all people, Jews and non-Jews alike. We'll never know. But what a message of dignity on Jesus' behalf, giving dignity. What I appreciated the most about the Canaanite woman was the dignity and respect with which she treated Jesus in her first interaction with him and two times later in that same passage. She referred to him as Lord and Messiah. Those weren't words that a Canaanite would use. Canaanites were polytheists. They believed in many gods and Jesus was not one of them. She knew who she was talking to, though, even more, I think, than the disciples. And Jesus knew who he was talking to as well, a believer, a faithful woman, a child of God. Today's gospel is a great example of reconciliation and rectifying wrongs. We make mistakes, 
that impact the lives of others all the time. We're accountable to the Lord and to one another for reconciling and repenting from our wrongdoers, wrongdoings, even blessing the people that we offend. Jesus right, righted his wrong. In his own free will, he apologized by blessing the mother and healing her daughter. Despite his harsh words, our Lord realized that the slave woman was a person with dignity, a dignity given to her by the Creator. The Lord also realized that she was correct. Even dogs get crumbs. Why shouldn't she? The divine nature of Christ was manifested by his human action when he realized he had wronged her and changed his attitude. When the mother confronted Jesus with her prophetic voice, Jesus perceived her courageous faith, whether her presence was predestined by God for Jesus' sake or humanity's sake is inconsequential here. The bigger purpose was Christ opening the door of compassion and love for everyone. We are living in times where the global population must be more conscious of opening hearts and minds with compassion and love for all of God's people. In the end, Jesus celebrated the woman's faith. I celebrate Jesus' ability to turn himself around by listening and acting and including. One might say that the woman, the woman plowed through to Jesus. She knew what she wanted and she would not have it any other way. In the end, one might also say that Christ's mission of inclusion was rolled out by a Canaanite woman. What the story of the Canaanite woman inspired, what has the story of this Canaanite woman inspired perhaps in you today? Amen.